Okay, so today I'm going to take a look at gravitational fields. And I've highlighted a couple of key things that you should know for gravitational fields to use in like written answers and that sort of thing. First is, gravitational fields are always attractive. Mass is always attracted to other mass. It never tries to send mass packing the other way. It's always like, hey bro, come over here. I want to be friends. It's not pushing things away. So that's nice. The other thing is when we're thinking about potentials for a gravitational field, the potentials are always going to be negative and I'll explain why that is a little bit later, but that's just a key thing to know. The other thing is gravity acts over an infinite range, so it doesn't matter how far away something is, if every mass in the universe has actually has a, um, has a force on and every other mass, which I always find really interesting and it's slightly crazy to think that I'm having an impact on something completely other side of the universe, but we do, and that's cool. So let's move on and take a look at things in more detail. So first of all, the force of gravity. So if we want to know the force between two objects, so we want to know the force, we need to know a few things. We need to know the mass of one of the objects, and we need to know the mass of the other object. And we usually use this big M here to show um, the bigger mass. So if we're looking at maybe planet Earth and the moon, or the sun and the planets, we put the big mass as this big M here, and the smaller mass as this M M here. It's convention, it doesn't actually matter, but that's what we do. And force is inversely proportional to the distance between the objects squared. So it's one of uh, the inverse square laws that exists. There's quite a few that you'll come across, but this is uh, maybe the first one you'll come across. So the force is well, it's proportional to the mass of the one object times the mass of the other over r squared. And we actually have a constant of this relationship, and we call it the gravitational constant. Okay, so that's it there. It's the gravitational constant. Okay, so just for your information, g is equal to 6.67. Times ten to the minus eleven. Don't forget to make make it minus eleven, not eleven. It's a mistake I occasionally make. And the units of it is newtons, meters squared, kilograms to the minus two. So that's a nice complicated set of units we got there. It's just something to know if you're in an exam or that sort of thing you always get given this, it's not something you need to remember, but it's always useful to remember these things. Okay, so that's the force. But quite often with objects we're not necessarily just interested in the force because we maybe want to test them with lots of different masses, say for instance around the Earth, we have satellites with lots of different masses. What we're interested in is the gravitational field strength of the planet, and we usually use the notation for that of E. So E is the field strength, and field strength is the force per unit mass. So what this equation tells you is it tells you the force that, say, a planet or a mass will exert on one a mass of one kilogram at a distance r from it. So in that case, this is going to be, you have your g again, you're going to have your m, so that's the mass, the mass that's providing the field. We said it's the force per unit mass, so we don't include the smaller mass and you've got our r squared. So that gives you the field strength, and obviously if we want to work out what the force of mass is, we just multiply that by the mass we want to test it with, and we get that 
answer there. So what are the units of this? Well, there are actually two units of field strength. We can always write it as newtons per kilogram. Or we can also write it as meters seconds to minus two. You probably come across both of these when you looked at mechanics and you were looking at objects that were falling under the acceleration of gravity, but I just thought I would throw those in there as a reminder. So that's field strength, and that's something very useful to us. So we happen to know what the Earth's field strength is, so we can do our calculations for the satellites that we build. Okay, so that's field strength. So what we need to look at is um, we're going to move on to look at potential. So potential, we give the symbol V. And what potential is, is it's the gravitational potential energy per unit mass. So that just begs the question, what is this GPE I've heard so much about? Because it's not the GPE that we've come across before where we looked at, was it MGH that we used? It's something different. And the potential energy when we're talking about gravitational fields is we have this point really far in the distance we're going we're gonna to say is infinity, okay? And we have our mass over here and we have some field lines around it representing where the gravitational field is. It's not the most accurate diagram in the world but it's useful. So if we want to know what the gravitational potential energy is at this point here, gravitational energy is the energy it takes to move a mass from infinity to that point there. Okay and so this is where it's like confusing because we use the notation EP. So it's very easy to get it confused with the field strength of it, but it's very important that you don't. And what we find is that to calculate it, again we've got the mass of our planet, we've got the mass of our test charge, so what is the mass that we're moving from one place to another? And instead of R squared on the bottom, we have R here. So the question is, well, where's this minus sign come from? Well, the thing is, what I said before is that gravity is always attractive. So the object wants to move from infinity into the gravitational field. It's being pulled that way. So you're not having to do work to move it between those points. Quite the opposite. You can actually get work out of it. And if you can get work out of it, that's where this minus sign comes from, because that indicates that the work is going out the system. If you have to do work to move the object from infinity into the field, like when we come on to look at electric fields with like charges, then you'll end up with a positive. But because gravity is attractive and you can get work out, out of it effectively, it has a minus sign in front of it. So that's the GPE. What I said we were looking for is the potential. And that and I said it is the GP per unit mass, so just like before, we're gonna cancel that small m out. And that, that gets us the potential and the units of which are joules per kilogram. And obviously the potential energy is just measured in joules. Okay. So what you notice about the potential is that it's, it's proportional to 1 over the distance away. So it's not r squared anymore, it's just the distance away. Okay. So the last bit I want to look at is, well, what is the difference between an, a radial gravitational field and a uniform one? And this is quite a distinction that's quite important when you're answering questions. Because when we're answering questions 
use um, like on Earth and with near Earth objects. Um, so we're taking, we're looking at maybe potential energy and stuff on the planet, and we're looking how it converts into kinetic energy. We always assume that we're operating in a uniform gravity field, i.e. that the acceleration or the force due to gravity is constant throughout that. So when you're doing calculations on the Earth's surface or in the Earth's atmosphere, we're always assuming that the gravity field is uniform. That's because there's actually not a massive diff change in the the distance from the centre of mass in that equation. So it's actually a fair assumption. Whereas when we talk, start to talk about satellite and move further and further into outer space, we can note that assumption is no longer valid, and we have to start taking into account the fact that the field strength changes as you get further away from it. Now we have to consider the radial ones. So whereas uniform fields, we just say that when the field strength is the force per mass, in the radial field we have to use that the field strength is changing um, as your radius gets further away, and in a uniform field, the field strength or the acceleration due to gravity, whatever you want to call it, is the same everywhere in the field, whereas in a radial it's not. It's an inverse square relationship. Okay.